Storage is such an important part of every one of our homes. And so before taking on either creating bespoke storage or trying to buy less expensive solutions, they still really need some good thought. So this is a great video to take a quick look at if you are going to be thinking about storage for your home. Okay, so first up, I'm gonna talk about my favorite storage area and that has to be my dressing room. Just before going through all the beautiful details of my storage solutions in my dressing room and what really works for me, I wanted to talk about something that I don't feel people often really bring up in these kinds of videos and it is accessorizing with accessories in the room. You know, we're always talking about accessorizing with uh, different pieces, different decorative pieces, flowers, but actually in a dressing room, what's really great is being able to dress the room with, you know, accessories from that space. And one of my great tips is choose a gorgeous bag, choose a gorgeous piece of clothing. It could be a really lovely scarf and just drape that somewhere. In my case and for this video, I am actually going to accessorize with a stunning bag that I have just received from Teddy Blake. The one I've been sent is an Ava Croco Gold in a dark green. Now it is just fabulous and glistens in every sense of the word. It is literally the perfect accessory, not just for my handbag collection, but also as part of my dressing room accessory. And I really love having something in the dressing room to accessorize my space with. It's just the most lovely bag. And actually one thing I really love about a bag like this is just the structure of the bag. It's such a beautiful shape and it really holds its shape because of its sort of strong structure. And I always find that, you know, there are so many bags I fall in love with, but those that have the strongest structure make me feel, you know, they'll last longer and actually they tend to be my favorite bags. Okay, finally, and my last point about Teddy Blake is that they've got new colors every month and I actually love their color range. I find that Unfortunately today, colors in handbags seem to be quite limiting and I love color, especially when it comes to a handbag because you can wear anything neutral and then have this really gorgeous pop of color in your bag. And they do these lovely range of skins. So they're gorgeous bags. And if you click the link below, you do get a $30, which is equivalent, I think, to around 30 pounds of a discount. So do click the link below and take a look. They've got some gorgeous bags back onto my dressing room. And so other than styling with a handbag, I think I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about why I picked the storage that I have in this space. Okay, so firstly, I think what's really important to assess when you're thinking about storage in any space is who is using this space and what is that person's needs, but what are also that person's habits. So I'm gonna give you an example. In my dressing room, I, often find that I'm in a real rush to go to meetings or get to school drop-offs on time. And so I know that I've got this really busy schedule and although I love everything neat and tidy, when I'm looking for something, I tend to throw everything around because I'm in a rush and I just need to find what I'm going for um, and I don't really have time to put things back. So what I've tried to do within my wardrobe is color coordinate everything so that if I'm looking for a particular thing, I know exactly where I'm going. And that really helps me when I'm in a rush and it means that actually my dressing room isn't messy and feels a bit more comfortable for me. So that's the first thing I do with my dressing storage area. The other thing I think for me that's really important is knowing where I need to go first thing in the morning. And for me, the first thing I do in the morning is go to the gym. So knowing that I have sort of all of my gym outfits and gym wear and t-shirts and everything else in one place, leggings, crop tops and t-shirts just by the chair in the dressing room so that actually in the morning it's the first thing I can grab, sit down and put it on. So although in many ways, you know, when we buy a wardrobe or we create a bespoke wardrobe, we're not necessarily thinking about where's the first place I'm gonna go for in the morning. Potentially it should be and definitely that helps me with my morning routine because I wake up super early and I don't wanna spend a lot of time thinking about where I need to go in the wardrobe. Okay, so my final point is a point about aesthetics. For me, obviously, as a designer, aesthetics are really important and I think that, you know, 
depending on the aesthetic that you have, you can really change the way an environment feels. Now, why that's important for me in particular in my dressing room is because it's one of the few spaces in my home I can run to when I need some peace and quiet and relaxation. I wanted to create something that was very nature inspired. So it's nature inspired, neutral, and very, very relaxing and soft. And I'm immediately unwinding the minute I walk in there. So I guess when you have a look at the aesthetic of what we've created and we've got this really beautiful branching wallpaper throughout the room, it really does feel like this sort of garden inspired room where nature is the feature in many ways, but also relaxation and neutral vibes, I suppose, all around. So do think about what that needs to be for you. For me, it's definitely a place where I can escape to, but also I think there are days where I'm not feeling like getting dressed. I don't really want to go anywhere. I can't be bothered. I'm exhausted. I haven't slept all night. So what I want is somewhere that makes me feel inspired to do a little bit more and to go that extra mile. So, you know, keeping it looking the way it looks and making sure the storage works for me, but also from an aesthetic point of view, creating something that makes me feel inspired is really, really important, not just for my mental health, but you know, for those days where I really just don't wanna do anything but sit in the chair and not move. Kids' rooms should be fun. I mean, kids are fun. So, you know, let's take some joy in designing storage for kids and, you know, be really thoughtful about it because, you know, there's not either brightly colored rainbow or super neutral and worrying about how quick they'll grow and, you know, creating this everlasting space. I mean, you can have fun with it and there can be an in-between. You can create something that's really beautiful, neutral enough for you, but playful enough for the kids. And you'll be surprised at how mature their actual taste is when you come to, you know, asking them um, about the things they like. I mean, let's face it, our kids are inspired by the colors that we surround them in and are inspired by our own interiors so you know you will be relatively surprised at their sort of taste levels and their style levels so do ask them about their rooms and get them involved I guess a perfect example of this is the storage in my boys bedroom where you know they've chosen this really beautiful shade of green which I didn't expect them to choose they were bored of blues they didn't want any bright brash colors no you know, bright yellows and bright reds uh, mixed together, no rainbow. They actually wanted something really quite mature and something I think I was quite proud of. Another thing I think is really important in kids' storage is, you know, preempting the telling off our kids. Tidy up, tidy up, tidy up. Knowing that actually that's always going to be a little bit of a struggle. You know, if you make sure that you create storage areas that A, they can actually get a hold of so that they are low enough that your kids can actually, you know, grab onto them. And B, make drawers that aren't sort of really narrow that, you know, your kids are having to worry about where they put each item. You know, does this dinosaur fit in here? Does this book fit in here? Just give them some big, deep storage that they can actually grab hold onto and just stuff all their toys in. You know, ultimately, if we are trying to inspire our kids to you know get tidied up and where we're encouraging them to have this beautiful decluttered space where we're not causing fire hazards you know every 30 centimeters you know let's encourage the right habits and you know getting them into these habits but if you are going to ask them to create this new habit then it's got to initially be an easy step for them to achieve I think another really important thing with children is to really surround them in the things that they love. Much like you or I would want to be surrounded in things that you know we love and we're passionate about. Allow your children to, you know, whilst they're growing up, be immersed in those things that they love. You know, this childhood just rushes past so quickly and it's such a beautiful thing to watch them fall in love with so many different things and so many different elements and characters and you know, just different themes across, you know, their youth. And I think um, one way of doing this, which doesn't irritate all of us, is by 
allowing those things that they love to be really beautifully displayed. I mean, you know, nobody wants to see 900 dinosaurs lined up in different rows in a thousand different colors. And actually, if you do do that, then it's only encouraging your child to go and buy another dinosaur and another dinosaur every time you take them out. But actually, if you've got really beautiful display area and you've got these sort of four really lovely display units that can only really hold one or two dinosaurs, it almost persuades the child not to go and buy 20 dinosaurs because, you know, they'd have to all squash into that box. So, you know, creating beautiful display areas doesn't only surround your child by what they love, but it also introduces this concept of, you know, I've only got so much space for so many things. So you're starting to teach them really different lessons just by actually creating this incredible storage solution that does much more than one thing. We all want our children to be inspired to learn more and to read more. And I think for me, one of the really great ways you can do that is either within your storage areas, making sure that you've got space for books. Um, and then, you know, although this isn't fully storage, you can again inspire that by having little reading lights by their bed. So if you've got enough storage by them that, you know, they can grab a book and then have a reading light by them so that they can actually read a little bit before they go to bed. You know, those are all very subtle ways of designing in inspiring ways to learn. Living rooms. I think living rooms are probably one of the most complex areas to design storage for because if you are really considerate in your living room, and if you design a living room really well, you're not just thinking about, how do I use this space? You're actually thinking, well, hold on, this is the one space where we are having to look after and consider a huge range of different personalities, characters, ages, shapes, sizes. And so you really need to start to make proper notes, if you can, about who's using the living room, who's regularly using the living room, who is irregularly using the living room, and how much do you care to support their needs? You know, so I think this is the one place that you've got to really think about what do you want to do with this storage? Storage, definitely in London, and I'm sure not in all parts of the world, but definitely in London, is a real problem. And so knowing what you're going to do with that is really important. Now in my living room, definitely, the living room space also serves as a living room for my family, but also for the guests. So it's got to be this space which is actually still quite smart. And so, you know, potentially we wanted to display things, but also we wanted to be able to sit down and do homework with the kids. So, you know, where are we gonna store their homework books? Where are we gonna store their books? Where do we have the display items? What are we going to display in the display areas? You know, what books are we going to display? And I think all of those things mean really considering who the users, if you like, are. Um, it sounds like a very sterile um, way of saying, you know, who we're looking after. But, you know, that is ultimately what you're having to think about. You know, I would even go so far as to say, take out a piece of paper, write down all the names, the regular people who are using the home and the living space, the people who are coming in and out, the people you're entertaining, you know, and how are you going to make the storage work for everybody? Now, we wanted to make sure our storage in the living room had two different sections. So one where we were displaying beautiful items so it did look quite smart. And of course, we wanted to still keep that smart but family. So we've got lots of photo frames even inside the cabinetry um, and inside the shelving. But then also we've got some lower storage, which is closed storage. And in there we've got our children's reading books. We've got the Tinder to light the fire with. We've got, you know, my husband's newspapers. We've got masks in there that we might use if we're, you know, leaving the house and having to wear a mask. So, you know, we've just made sure we've got enough covered storage and uncovered storage that actually we can display, but we've also got enough space to create this functional area where everybody in the family gets to use this space. I think the thing to note with storage is, you know, ultimately, if you are going down the bespoke road, then there is a cost implication to that. And so you really do want to think as much as possible as you can in terms of, you know, what is the longer term use of this item. 
But also, even if you're building in something that's less expensive, you do want some really longevity in there. And you know, just trying to really plan that out in advance is really important. I think a lot of people will go for either just the way something looks or what they think is appropriate for their kids instead of really asking themselves those questions. Um, and I hope I've encouraged those questions because I think without those questions, we take many, many things for granted. You know, we all think we know ourselves really well, and so we don't necessarily feel we need to ask ourselves certain questions. You know, I don't really want to admit that I'm ever messy, but you know, there are many, many moments in a day where I know I'm in a rush, I know I don't have time, and so I need to preempt um, that potential clutter. So, you know, just asking yourself these questions and jogging your memory about your own habits as well as others will really help with your storage aspirations. I've obviously only mentioned some things that you can think about, but please, if you've got any ideas in terms of what else we should be asking ourselves uh, when it comes to storage, whether it's for your kid's room, your own room, any space in your house, then please do let me know. I would be so pleased to kind of hear about what your thoughts are, but also please do feel free to give me more ideas. I'm always learning and I'd love to hear more from you.